Let us truly make you a lightning god. What's up guys, I'm here and here we are to do a discussion on what the heck Kashimo's curse technique could be. Obviously with Kashimo charging into battle at the end of 236, he's gonna need that curse technique to fight the king of curses. I don't think anyone, and I mean anyone, believes that Kashimo's running in there with just his pure hands and lightning bolts and getting down and dirty. So I think it's time to finally formulate the man a curse technique. So let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into it. What do we guys all want to hear? Fun fact, I have it on me and I keep it on me at all times. And let's hope that Kashimo has it on him and keeps it on him at all times. Let's also hope he gets a fight that's longer than Yorosu's. Because if Kashimo gets a shorter fight than Yorozu, I don't... Gay gay when I catch you gay. But regardless, there are a few stipulations that we need to have for this curse technique within what this series has implied to us. Notably, I have been completely wrong in reading the series before, so maybe my implications are wrong. Feel free to correct me. I believe there are a couple implications with Kashimo's curse technique. Number one, the biggest implication, and one that makes it really hard to make, at least it... Seems like it doesn't actually take his life. You may be wondering, what do you mean? But he is alive in his previous life when he makes the deal with Kenjaku to resurrect for the Culling Games to fight Sukuna. And in his second life, he knows what his curse technique is and that he can only use it one time. A big theory that I constantly see with Kashima curse techniques is that's like one big eye for an eye kind of thing, like Law of Clue Exchange type B, on some full metal alchemist kind of moves, where essentially Kashimo sacrifices his life in exchange for the other, and bada bing, bada boom, you get some beautiful stuff like that. I, maybe I can see this in one very, very slight and strict interpretation, but I don't think so. He is very clearly alive when he's talking with Kenjaku. Kenjaku's not talking to a spirit, so his curse technique in and of itself cannot instantaneously off him after it's concluded its usage. Number two, it cannot drain his CE entirely. And the reason I mention that is because one of my original ideas for Kashimo's curse technique was that, oh, well, Broski could just, like, burn out all of his cursed energy in one big final, like, Omega Lightning Blast. Like, a crazy, massive, almost on a final explosion type beat, where he just releases everything. But once again, that breaks rule one of it needs to keep him alive. And once again, due to that, that one panel of him, when he's at the end talking with Kenjaku and he says, fine, I'll join your little game so I can fight Sakuna, he has Sparks, which is his cursed energy trait. So it can't burn out all his cursed energy. So it can't be those two things. And number three, it has to be so strong that after witnessing the entirety of the Gojo and Sukuna fight, the absolute devious and dastardly things that were going on in there, that he is still charging in with a smile on his face. It has to be that powerful. Those are three very, st <laughs> they're very difficult stipulations to be met all within one curse technique, but I got a couple ideas. Number one, this is the most basic that is kind of an evolution of his existing abilities without like genuinely going absolutely insane. I know I probably should be going absolutely insane. Literally, Sukuna can cut space now, not even people. So like, I should probably go insane, but we'll get insane in the next two ideas. The first idea I have for Kashimo's curse technique is automatic lightning. I may be wondering, what? But remember how Kashimo's current ability set works. In order for him to get that you can't miss attack, he needs to hit you. He needs to punch you. You need to hit him. Charges need to be placed on you or on his weapon. These are things that need to be placed before the bolt can activate. This bolt is extremely powerful. It's able to tear straight through people with infinite curse energy like Jackpot Akari and force him to regenerate. But ultimately, the biggest hindrance for Kashimo and a lot of other matchups is that it's very difficult for him to get those hits required. I believe the lowest count his hits have gotten is four. But even still, with some matchups that we see Kashimo getting put in, just landing four hits is going to be kind of difficult. But for his curse technique, the reason he can only use it once is because it bypasses that hit requirement. Instead of Kashimo needing to strike you, he can simply bolt you as many times as he wants for a set period of time. Preferably, this would be like in a five to ten minute range. And the reason I think this works is because, one... It meets all the stipulations. It does not absolutely take his life, which is the hardest stipulation to meet. Two, 
it fully fits within the criteria that he can use it and still keep his curse energy after the fact. And three, it is extremely, extremely broken. Now you may be wondering, really? It's just him like aimbotting lightning? Is it really that broken? Remember, I know infinite curse energy does not automatically mean infinite bulk. Trust me. But I do believe that Jackpot Akari is much stronger than base Hikari. And he is stronger than Yuta Okotsu. Whether or not that means he's bulky, it's questions. But the fact that these bolts are able to casually tear through, 100% tear through, and cannot miss, the only reason those things are balanced is because he needs to hit you first. If he didn't have to hit you, him simply sending out one bolt in the direction of your head, and then another bolt in the direction of your arm, and then another bolt in the direction of your leg, and another bolt. Like, legitimately, him just being able to spam bolts would go absolutely insane. And it would explain how he even stands a remote chance. Because one of the biggest things about his bolts that's very similar to Sukuna's current techniques is that they seem nigh on undodgeable. The narrator himself, or itself, literally claims that Kashimo's can't miss attack is the bolt, even though there's no domain. In a similar vein to how Sukuna's slashes are pretty much can't miss attacks, to the point where characters like Satoru Gojo can look them dead in the face and get off screen by them. So the level of potency and power is being matched, they're being equivocated. The reason this can only be used once is because... It's just a binding vow placed on the technique to make it even stronger. When I say Kashimo's firing unlimited bolts, I don't mean bolts of, like, the generic variety. Like, oh, you, know, you know, they're, like, taking off an arm. They're detonating a brain. You know, they're, they're getting up in your guts a little bit. No, I mean these are taking, like, vaporizing limbs. Vaporizing body parts. Like, literally, these bolts are massive. They're much less... <laughs> Does this sound bad? The much less lightning bolts in the convention, conventional, conventional sense, where it's like that tiny little arc of electricity. No, these are like massive beams. For example, a very similar case is like, you know how Storm from Marvel, when she summoned lightning bolts, they're like massive. They're like vaporizing entire bodies worth of people. Yeah, these are the kind of bolts that Kashimo gets access to. The reason they're once in a lifetime is because they are that big. They are that massive. They bypass any sort of restrictions that Kashimo himself has in terms of cursed energy limit, cursed energy output, all that, because it's only a one-time use. This level of destructive power that absolutely tears through everything would work, especially considering the fact that, you know, they're essentially undodgeable, but they're massive. How would Sukuna survive it? That's a good question. <laughs> That's the big thing. Because once again, a secret four stipulation that I have is that Sukuna somehow needs to be able to win. Because, like, I mean, I honestly, <laughs> you know what the sad thing is? I honestly wouldn't be too mad if Kashima actually beat Sukuna. But, like, I don't know. If I'm just weighing things on the narrative scale... If Gojo wasn't worthy enough to beat Sukuna, I don't think Kashima was. I think we're saving Sukuna for somebody else. So, I think it's... But then again, actually, you know, it can just literally be undodgeable. You want to know why? Because same reasons why I don't think Sukuna really has to fully go if he loses 19 fingers. There's still that last finger. He's still, he's still around. And obviously there's Yuji, who also is steeped in Sukuna's cursed energy. So, like, Megami being absolutely vaporized by gigantic lightning bolts... I mean, it's sad, but not if there's anyone <laughs> or anything that would really feel bad about that. Kasha wouldn't care about vaporizing Megami. He was telling Gojo to stop thinking about Megami and get more active. So for the first big bad technique, it would be Kashimo essentially turning off all limitations of his bolts and jacking them up to infinity. There would just be gigantic lightning blasts. How he would control them is pretty interesting. You could argue it would be like a point and click kind of thing. Like he points at a general body part, like we see him guide bolts in the Akari fight where he simply points at Akari's head and the lightning just wiggled in Akari's head's general direction. Or what would be more interesting to me so we can actually have some use of that staff, he has to use the staff to guide them. And to be fair, if you want to make it even more interesting, instead of the bolts coming from Kashimo himself, he could literally summon thunderclouds and sort of, boom, guide them down from the heavens themselves. Him literally becoming a sort of weather deity. Because that's a lot of Kashimo's symbolism. That very staff is the symbol 
or the weapon of the Raijin, which I believe is a lightning god. So, considering he is described as a lightning god, that staff didn't really do much in the battle against Sakari other than be literally a lightning rod, I think it would kind of make sense if Kashima would guide the bolts down with his staff, or even crazier, catch the lightning on his staff and then throw it at somebody. Only issue with this is that if Sukuna feels a little bit silly, a little bit goofy, he could just hit Kashima before he launches it off. Just because the bolts are undodgeable and extremely big, it doesn't mean that, you know, Sukuna couldn't just throw out a slash. Once again, the man's perception blitz Satoru Gojo. All four black flashes. Kashima's gonna need some insane speed to get active. Technique number two, once more diving into the realm of sheer insanity and compensating for um, Kashima's, let's just say lack of ability to ignore space in his current physical form let's go to a common idea that i've been seeing discussed around a lot kashimo literally becoming pure energy pure juice pure gas and what do i mean by this so kashimo is the lightning god the very series addresses him as such and ultimately it would make sense that kashimo would have confidence in fighting sukuna even after seeing the man literally cut space if he had a way to bypass the, well, space slashing nature of the hash slinging slasher known as Sakuna. And with that being the case, an energy shift where he essentially sort of sheds his physical form, if only momentarily, would be enough. Now, this could just be comboed on top of the original technique, where since he's pure energy, he could essentially guide lightning. And this is where Sakuna would have to sort of adapt on his own, before he used Maharaga in order to adapt to Gojo's invulnerability or infinity, or neutral limitless, whatever you want to call it. But in this case, against this new energy-based Kashimo, Sakuna would be forced to figure out how to adapt to it on the fly. This Kashimo would be literally lightning like straight up lightning i'm trying to think of an equivalent comparison of something made of pure energy from another series there are so many lightning based characters i don't know why i cannot think of one off the top of my head but essentially this would allow that any and i mean any of kashimo's attacks if they are launched one way or another can immediately hit because once again they now have the sure hit property of kashimo's basic bolts and not only that any attacks that are launched against kashimo let's say sakuna swings even if he's pulling off the space slash like he did against gojo it wouldn't matter sure you can cut the space of energy but that energy will simply recoalesce or worse even worse it splits and then the energy duplicates and then you have two kashimos but that may be spoiler for the third technique but essentially this technique would allow kashimo to fit pretty much all the rules it doesn't have to execute him it can literally just be a time limit based thing where he burns up a either a majority of his life force or simply once again it's a limited one-time technique where he becomes this pure energy but then restores to a physical form after a while whereas as long as sukuna stalls him out long enough well Kashimo's timer's up. He can't stay in Thunder God mode for long. I think <laughs> it's going to sound bad. If you ever played Smite, there is a Raijin type character. I haven't played Smite in so long. But there is a Raijin type character that literally goes into a God mode for a little bit where they can just control lightning and kind of become it. Just think that. And then there's a limited time on the ult. The ult runs out and then Kashimo's back to being Kashimo. It could explain why he was still alive and able to talk to Kenjaku. It would explain why he thinks he stands a chance against Sakuna. And it would explain why he still has his cursed energy because he still returns back to the basic form after a while he would essentially have this crazy cool moment of becoming this insane next level deific creature that has absolute control over all sorts of energy and mass specifically lightning but it would also explain how like he's not going to beat sakuna because sakuna would be able to stall him out the wonders of this form is what are the upper limits of it right with him becoming pure energy like does he just to phase through anything he interacts with when he punches you is there still a paralysis effect because you know his basic ability has that or would it be some sort of case where he is basically himself like you can barely tell the difference instead of him literally becoming pure energy he is simply himself but with the properties of pure energy in a similar vein to how one can become themselves but also well, that's a bad 
equivalency. I was that's a spoiler for a major series. Let me not talk about that one. But essentially, in another series, there is a character who is themselves like they are literally their same exact physical form, but they have taken on the entire list of properties from whatever they're replicating. Actually, no. There's an easy example for this: Alogia. Turn Kashimo into Alogia, <laughs> and don't give Sakuna hockey. <laughs> There you go. I don't have to spoil that one series I'm thinking of. For one, for my One Piece fans out there, and there are a bunch of you, I know there are, think of it as Kashibo literally becoming a Logia type food. Think of him as an L. Just make him an L. But preferably, I mean, maybe you can make him as broken as an L. Anything, ironically enough, anything in this battle that Kashimo does will just upscale Sakuna. Because once again, I don't think Sakuna's losing. If Sakuna does lose, though, I mean, it would make sense if he loses to a literal Thunder Deity. Like, just energy incarnate. And you could literally have the same properties of the first technique and even more properties. Since Kashimo is literally pure energy, give him absolute domain over all of that type of electrical energy. They're fighting in a city. And sure, the city is um shut down, for lack of better terms, and also majorly destroyed. But let him control all of that energy. Say it's for, like... In a similar vein to how Sakuna's open barrier domain, due to the fact that it has so many binding vows placed on it, it allows for certain perks and benefits. Since this is a once-in-a-lifetime usage curse technique, when Kashimo becomes pure energy, not only does he gain all the properties of electricity despite looking like himself, but he also gains dominion over all electricity in the external area around him. So, if there are any clouds in the sky, electricity, all the static electricity that's in the air, he gets control over that. All the electricity that's pumping through the modern world he gets control of that and he essentially gets to become this literal deity with con absolute control over all energy within the world and this would make him extremely broken and nigh on unstoppable because the thing is right at least with what we know right now sakuna has no way to interact with that or stop kashima if he truly does gain the properties of a logia from one piece slicing him in half doesn't do anything without hockey <laughs> like it, it wouldn't really do much and thusly even the spatial slash would just cost him in half and he'd be like is that all you got and just keep fighting forward once again the only way because he's sakuna winning against this is if he once again further adapts if he essentially extends the targets of cleave and dismantle or even his true technique so far that he's not simply cutting space that he's literally cutting energy itself, doing something that's literally impossible, which is the absolute destruction of energy. No more energy in the universe can be created or destroyed, and it can simply be reborn. Well, actually, heat death of the universe. That's a, another story for another time that has nothing to do with manga. But with that being the case, that kind of power would allow Sakuna to transcend Kashimo even in that state. Or you could literally just make it that the new cleave or dismantle, whichever you think it is, that Sakuna uses to initiate the spatial slash, it's a perspective-based thing. So at first, Kashima's was going crazy. He's slobber knocking Sakuna around. He knocks Sakuna away, dropping lightning bolts on him over and over and over again. Sakuna's healing as rapidly as he can in a similar vein to how Gojo was healing within his domain, fighting it off, fighting it off, and figuring it out, and getting a better understanding of his new technique. Sure, he used it once immediately because he's a jujutsu genius, but then he understands, wait, wait a minute, why have it? Thin and small when I can have this perspective type beat and sort of how when you're looking up in the sky and you see a plane that appears so tiny that you could fit it almost in the palm of your hand Kashimo the lightning deity as he prepares a final strike from the heavens Sukuna sends that space slash and due to the perspective the slash while it appears and would seem minimal for us the readers from close from Sukuna's perspective Kashimo would be trapped within that tiny perspective and it all the space in there would be erased, including erasing Kashimo himself. That would be the only way I could see Sakuna beating him right now if he is a literal personification of lightning. Because I don't know how he stalls, or specifically when I say I don't know how he stalls, I don't know how Sukuna stalls out that Kashimo. If Kashimo literally has the sure hit property, it is pure energy, cannot be harmed by any of Sukuna's attacks permanently. Like, the only other way I could see it is that Sukuna has to almost either A, whip out domain that he now has restored because enough time has passed, or, sorry, I was about to make a Kagura Bachi joke, but 
He either does that because enough time has passed, or B, he mimics the effects of his domain by consistently throwing out cleaves or dismantles. If you remember the Ben 10 episode, I know this is such a weird link, but once again, Kasha was a weird kind of fella. I have no idea how his curse technique is going to cook. If you go back to the Ben 10 episode where you had Ben going up against the Megawatch for the first time in the classic series and he split them in half, sure, you may have a similar thing with Kashima where he could take one split and simply reform afterwards because he's pure energy. But Sakuna wouldn't just send one slash, he'd send two slashes and three slashes and four slashes and five and just keep sending them, sending them, sending them, essentially dividing Kashimo so much that he starts to lose his individuality and literally turn into pure energy. So the perks, the benefits still get shown where Kashimo, oh, well, t what's one spatial slash to me? But Sukuna sending hundreds, if not thousands of spatial slashes or just slashes in general, once again, cleaves or dismantles at Kashimo would tear him apart to the point where he cannot recoalesce into the singular Kashimo Hajime. But of course, that's the second idea, the ultra energy man instead of the simple lightning bolt guider. The final idea I have is a little bit, um, kind of an evolution of the second idea. So, Kashimo is a beast of lightning. And if you know anything about lightning, it's that it is a mass of energy. And you know, E equals MC squared. Thusly, Kashimo, being made of pure energy, could hypothetically split and split, and split, and split, and split, and split, and dominate the entire area by bursting into a thousand Kashimos. And I may be wondering, what? But the reason I say this is because Kashimos technique seems to need to meet three criteria that are nigh on impossible. And the best way for those to be met is if Kashimo can spread himself around. Remember when we see Kashimo, when he's making that deal with Kenjaku, he's squatting down on a rock in a group of uh, thousands of, well, not thousands, but a bunch of bodies. They're just all on the ground. And presuming he used his technique, and then the multiple Kashimo's idea could be literally used to justify how he did that, how he won that fight, how he beat the reverse jump. So Kashimo isn't just in one place, he's in another place, and another place, and another place. And you could justify this by Kashimo's extension of the charge placing ability. So every place that the singular Kashimo touches, a new Kashimo is born, and then another one, and then another one, and then another one. And presuming he's still in an energy-like form, he's leaving charges everywhere, every single piece of contact. He's constantly creating more and more and more and more of himself. And then you have the same effect of Sukuna having to fight off an energy being. But instead of fighting off one energy being, he's not fighting off two, he's not fighting off three, he's fighting off thousands. And every single time he attacks Kashima, whether it be with one slash, two slash, red slash, blue slash, he's simply causing it to divide. Once again, going back to the Ben 10 episode, one of the Buzz Shock's abilities, or the Megawatt's abilities, maybe proper, was the ability to split and then simply reform. So, I mentioned before, in the second level, the way Kashimo gets defeated by Sukuna is simply losing all connection through being split too many times. But in this case, splitting Kashimo would help. And would also explain why Kashimo is so confident in fighting Sukuna. Because Sukuna, using his generic ability on him, would just make more Kashimo. And the more Kashimo there is, the more of them that can enjoy the fight with Sukuna. And the more Kashimo there are, the more Sukuna has to struggle to take him down. And this would be a fantastic excuse to reintroduce Sukuna's ability. Not Cleave and Dismantle, not Malevolent Shrine, not even the Flame Arrow, but his actual ability. Because one of the biggest reasons why the cast and crew were so hesitant on jumping in wasn't just for the fact that they would get in Gojo's way, but also the fact that they are confident that Sukuna has a technique that could take them all out at once. It's something that he was hiding for them. And it seems like Sakuna was, but also you could just chalk it up to the fact that Sakuna couldn't use it against Satu Gojo because of the infinity. And he needed a way to adapt through it, which he specifically did with cleaving this mantle. But this ability, this AoE kind of attack, could be used to beat this Kashimo. Once again, the only issue is if Kashimo is pure energy. And he is duplicated everywhere. And every single slash simply makes more Kashimo. Unless this is like a wide range AOE existence ratio attack, I, I don't know how Kashima's supposed to lose.
That's the hard thing. And that's the hard thing about making Kashimo Curse Technique. It needs to be broken. It needs to be so broken that broken doesn't even seem like the appropriate word. It needs to be something so transcendental that Sukuna himself will struggle and Kashimo believes that Sukuna himself will struggle. It has to be a technique that's basically on par with the Limitless. If not beyond it at this point, because the Limitless is now far to Sukuna. <laughs> What's the neutral Limitless when you can literally slash through space? So... These techniques, these techniques that break the bounds and the limitations of Kashimo, essentially turn him from a man to not even a monster, but a god, a god of lightning, if you will. I think this is how you give Sukuna a good battle, not spoil his mood, as he says at the end of 236. The likelihood of these techniques, though, I think the second one is the most likely. The first one, I think it's a little bit too generic, a little bit too simple. Kashimo's curse technique wouldn't be... And I don't want to say it wouldn't be worth the build-up and the intrigue and the hype behind it if it was so simple of just removing limitation and having gigantic lightning bolts. I think it wouldn't be worth it a little bit at that point. So I think that's the second least likely. I'll admit the least likely is the final one. The most, essentially the lightning shadow clone jutsu. Remember, this, this ability would kind of literally just be Kashi, Kakashi's lightning clones. Remember the battle against Pain when he whipped out them lightning clones? That's what this ability would be at its face value. Except all these lightning clones have access to all of Kashimo's abilities and, you know, can skip the whole build-up phase of charges. Since they are all technically charges and they are all technically energy. So, all of them diving in, it's... It's the least likely. I don't know, I just don't see... Maybe because I don't see a way for Sakuna to win that one. But then again, I didn't see a way for him to beat Yoda, so... They're wrong before. He'd definitely be wrong again. The most likely one is the one that everyone's been going with. The transformation into energy itself. I feel like it meets all the criteria the best. It is still extremely broken, but I could still figure out a way for Sakuna to win within reason. Because that's the biggest thing, right? As much as I love Kashima, in my heart of hearts, I do not see him beating Sakuna. But at the same time, that means Sakuna would have to beat him. <laughs> and with that being the case, that hard balance you have to strike. I think it's easier for me to imagine and envision Kashimo, even in energy form, losing to something like Malone Shrine or multiple slashes or some sort of fancy energy manipulation of Sakuna than Sakuna beating literally hundreds of Kashimos that give birth to themselves every single time he gets split in half. I don't know. But those are my three ideas for Kashimo's Curse Technique. Please leave your own ideas in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Turn to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure to go over the case so you do not miss out on any videos that come to the channel. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave... Zeus... Ah, now, that's, that's a little bit rough. Leave the next Zeus in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Ooh. I do not have. No. Am I? Am I a fraud? Where is it? Where is it? This is that got the pencil writing off. I'd like to give a very big thank you to our three dollar members of Connor Plays, Red Wolf, 4765, and Herb skills. I'd like to give another very big thank you to our five dollar patrons: Sean, Red Wolf four seven six five, Midnight Gem Lord, Kevin, and Demix LMD. I'd like to give another beefy thank you to our ten dollar patrons: Robbie Uchia and I Demo Kami. And I'd like to give a very, very hefty thank you to our twenty five dollar member Alex Ice Rose. I'd like to give another very big, scrumdily umptious thank you to our two twenty five dollar patrons. Igneal and Calvin Elder.